clearly the readings today are to instruct us on how to live. And if we just concentrate on the gospel, it's very beautiful in Mark's description. There's no animosity, there's no... One of the, one of the theologians, scribe, Gramitevs, means uh, theologian. So one of the theologians came to Jesus and asked him, which is the first of all the commandments? This was a common scholastic exercise to try. There are 613 positive commandments in the law of Moses. How do you organize them? Which is the first? Which is the greatest? And uh, Jesus answers saying the, the greatest commandment has two dimensions to it. So first, he quotes uh, Deuteronomy. See, you heard it. Listen, Israel. Adonai, our God, God alone. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and as uh, Mark has it here, all your mind and all your strength. That's a remarkable commandment, isn't it? You won't find that anywhere else in any religious literature except that which is coming from divine election and the word of God, to love God. Who is God? See, to have an idea, you see. I was thinking, suppose the greatest duty of the citizens of uh, Maryland were to love the governor. Everybody would say, what? But to love God. To love God. To have, you know, him, the greatest thing in our hearts and minds. To love him. This is a commandment. It shows you that the commandments are not laws. They're teaching. Love the Lord your God with everything you've got. We say that, you know. The minute I started the gospel, you've heard it so many times, you knew what the rest was going to be. But you see, we treat these things like we, we deal with them all day, as it were, and they don't impact us. You shall love God. How do we love God? Would you keep his commandments? No, no, no. Of course, you've got to keep his commandments. But love is more than that. Good soldiers keep all the commandments of the general. Love is something else. You shall love the Lord your God. Put him first in your esteem, in your attention, in your affection, in your mind, your obedience. He's first. It's amazing. And then, and Jesus, as far as we know, is the first to ever do this. He joins another commandment to it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And this comes from, comes from the book of Leviticus. So our Lord, in his incredible divine and human intelligence, says, see, what's the greatest of everything God ever told us to do? To love him with everything we got. You see, with all your heart. The heart is the very center of the personality, right? As uh, Robert Spemann, great, great philosopher, Catholic philosopher, says, you see, the heart is that place where there's nothing between us and God. It's that deep in us. It's that place where we can't hide. It's God and ourselves. 
Now, we tend to obfuscate that relationship because we don't want to be that direct with God. One of the Lord's great efforts is to purify us, to bring us close, to give us some confidence that we want to be just directly God. We got all sorts of, this is one of the real reasons why we love distraction. It takes from us the challenge of directly relating to God. I don't want to relate to God. I'm like, wow. I mean, like, what's the basis of that relationship? Mercy. Mercy. Love the Lord your God with all your, with your whole heart. Your whole heart is present to him. Lord, all day, all night, I love you. My whole being, the very core of my being, which is what heart means biblically, is there for you. See, and Bakol Nafshika, with all your, your nefesh, with all your soul, all your energies, mental, emotional, physical, they're all directed to God. This is the first commandment. If you wonder what to do next time you examine your conscience, just think about this. Do I love God with all my heart and all my soul? Pekomodecha is the last one. All my, my stuff, my, my strength, my money, my friends, my position, uh, my car. Do I love him with everything I've got? A good examination of conscience, right?